Hey guys, come on in. We got a packed house tonight, so I'm just going to let everyone in. Go ahead and take some time to grab a notebook, your oils. I'm putting on Believe and Clarity tonight. <laughs> what are you guys putting on? Come on in. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you? Good. 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 We have a packed house tonight. So I'm just letting everyone in and yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> right. Right. For those of you who don't know, I literally just pulled in my driveway and ran up my steps into my bedroom. I made a glass of tea. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to tell them that, but I didn't know. I was like, I know you are. You haven't even showered today. I'm Ooh. laying like, it's so good. <laughs> All good. Showers are overrated. I find that they take up too much time. <laughs> Agreed. 100%. If I could go back to my teenage years and tell myself that, right? One thing. Yes. Yeah. Very true. Right, so I'll give everyone just another minute to um, grab your oils, grab a notebook, grab a pen. You are going to want to grab that information that Dr. Candice Boyer is going to share tonight. Um, grab your oils and I'm going to look in the chat. What are y'all putting on tonight? Longevity. Ooh, yeah. That's a good one. I put that on my face without diluting it and my face was burning. <laughs> Angela, I should have known better. <laughs> should have known better. Okay. Okay, I'm let you in. Okay, we are going to record this tonight too. So it is recording. Um, and we will um, have that. I'll have that available on my YouTube. Dr. Candice Blair, do you have um do you have a YouTube or anything that I can send it to you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can upload it to my YouTube. Okay, good. I'll send you the recording as well so that we can send it out in multiple ways because I know, you know, everyone's busy. So welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Stutzman and I am first and foremost, a wife and a mom. Uh, my, my background is in education. I was a teacher, an elementary ed teacher for about nine years and then decided I wanted to stay home. It's always been my dream to stay home with my children and have a farm and raise animals and go barefoot in my garden. So, and that's what I do <laughs> almost every day and love it. I pursued holistic health coaching um, just because I love natural medicine. I love helping people find the root of their issue and just get back to basics of just good food, water, fresh air, laughter, sunshine. Um, and I'm excited to have Candace Boyer here tonight with us. She is a friend. She's a local physician and she um, has the same values as my husband and I as well. Just helping people get well and doing it as natural minded as possible. And so she's going to share with us tonight about the lymphatic system and through um, team YL. So not necessarily our young living team, but all of young living, there's a, as an RN, I believe her name is Tiffany. She has opened up a group to do a lymphatic challenge. Um, I like to think of it as like a reset. Um, because as children, you know, I watch my children and they're running, they're jumping, they're playing, um, and they're not sedentary. But as we age, you know, I feel like our lymphatic system just sometimes needs a little support, right? Because it's a system that doesn't have a pump that we need to actually be mindful of. And um, so I'm doing the reset and being mindful of how to support that lymphatic system because um, Dr. Boyer is going to talk about what it is and how it helps with toxin management. I like how she puts it. It's the kid that has to take out the trash. And if you have a child, <laughs> sometimes you have to remind them and you have to make sure they're doing their job, right? So I'm going to hand this off to Dr. Boyer. I'm so excited that she is here. She has a wealth of information. And if you are local, um, her practice just sounds amazing. She's in Southern Lancaster County. I'm in Northern Lancaster County. If you're in Lancaster County, um, it's a very long trip. It's like what, probably like an hour, hour and 20 minutes to get to you. 
Mm -hmm. So it's a very large county that we live in. Um, but I look forward to coming and visiting your new practice. So I'm going to let you take it over tonight and share your screen with us. Make sure you have a notebook, guys. Thank you, Dr. Boyer, for being here. Absolutely. I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully that part's going to work. Um, like Sarah said, I am um, an osteopathic doctor and I just wanted to thank her for a minute for having me on to do this. This is to talk about this topic is really, really cool. And with like-minded women and men, I don't know who's on here, but I think Young Living has put together a really fantastic program. Um, and so I'm just kind of piggybacking on that. I have a couple slides on what the, the challenge is, actually just one, um, but for the majority, I wanna just kind of show you, paint the bigger picture of how this fits into a toxin management lifestyle. Because for me, um, it's a huge, portion or a, le a huge piece of how we heal. So that's what the topic is called today. And as soon as it loads up, um, we're just basically going to talk about what the lymphatics are and, and how they're, they're a tool. Okay. So this is our outline. I'm really going to start by just telling you a really, really tiny bit of piece of my story. Um, because like Sarah, I also homestead, but I have done it um, mostly for my own health. And in that in home setting is where I found health. And so I'll introduce you to the four pillars. Toxin management is one of them. And then just the analogy of taking out the trash, which I just, is what I tell all of my patients, we give them, you guys are gonna get a, a really pretty free ebook that I've been working on and, and having fun with the creativity portion of it. My patients just get a plain old handout of all this stuff. Um, so we'll talk about that analogy and how lymphatics uh, really fit into that bigger overall plan. All right, so here's my deal. I'm an osteopathic physician. So I'm a wife, I'm a mom, and then I am um, a physician. And so I'm board certified in two things, osteopathic manipulative medicine and integrative medicine. So that, that top picture is just a picture of the osteopathic piece, which is my number one love and my passion. It means I get to put my hands on every single person and allow my hands to diagnose people and use my hands to help their body become more in motion because when they're, when life is motion and when the body is moving, it heals itself. And so that's the biggest premise of osteopathic medicine. And so, but here's where I found myself, right? Because I went to school for 30 some odd years. I did internship and after, during internship, there were some, literally some weeks where you worked 80 hours, where I spent 36 hours at a time in the hospital. So after internship and residency and having three babies in four years, I found myself incredibly sick, exhausted and frustrated. And no matter how many physicians and non-physician providers, because there are many, no one had any answers for me. And so I literally came back to myself and said, okay, I'm a physician, I can figure this out. And so I really, that's what I did. I went on a quest to heal myself. And that's kind of where the homestead piece fell into because you know, my other passion besides osteopathic medicine and integrative medicine is those four pillars, right? Teaching people how to eat real food, how to grow it, how to store it, exactly all the stuff that Sarah is doing. Um, and then that second pillar is toxin management. So I went on a quest really to heal myself. And so these are all my were, were in the past, all of, or some of my diagnoses. I have three autoimmune conditions. I have Hashimoto's, which is currently in remission. I have autoimmune adrenal, um, disease, as well as I had adrenal fatigue stage three, leaky gut, dysbiosis, mitochondrial dysfunction, which is obviously spelled wrong there, and um, mold illness. So all of those are part of my story. Um, and I hope that they're not part of, all of them are part of anyone else's story because it's, it's quite, um, was quite a challenging story and literally took me 10 years to heal. And so unfortunately I don't have a secret cure all, I wish I did. Um, but through lifestyle supplements, exercise, and sometimes not even exercise, because there were times literally where I don't even know how I kept my job, quite frankly, um, and ran my own practice. But through that, essential oils and these four pillars, and especially the toxin management piece, I can't stress you guys enough that without the toxin management pillar and without creating a toxin management plan, nobody heals. And so I see thousands of people a year. Um, and I see a ton of people that come to me after doing 
spending thousands and thousands of dollars on these functional medicine diagnostics. And at the end of the day, if they get a toxin management plan, and a lot of these things I'm gonna show you guys are cheap. They're not really that expensive to do at home. Um, so all that to say, when that toxin management plan is put into place, implemented and made a part of your routine, people heal. And it doesn't matter what the diagnosis is or what you're suffering from. And I'm hoping to impart a little bit of that for you guys tonight. All right, so real quickly, this is the Young Living Lymph Challenge. These are supplies that you need. Um, the cellulite magic, massage oil, cypress oil, citrus fresh, rosemary, multigreens, dry skin brush, and Epsom salt. I actually started the, the cleanse last week um, and it just fell right into line with some of the other things that I've been doing in my toxin management plan. So it's been really fun to just up my game in that lymphatic range because this is, this is a really intense um, lymph cleanse. And I think it can be a really, really beneficial for most people. And I think I say most, not because not everybody can benefit from it, but because there's there's a little bit of a sequence and an order to things. And sometimes as we'll get in into in the presentation is that if you're not in the right stage of the toxin management game or game, jumping into this limb challenge because it is so well put together can actually make you feel worse in the short run. So we'll go over that. All right, so here's the four pillars, guys. Simple nutrition, real food, toxin management, which is what we're doing tonight, but just a little piece of it, the lymphatics. True motion, the body needs to be moving, whether you're talking about breathing right, rounding, exercising, qigong, walking, or osteopathic medicine, the body needs to move to heal, okay? And then empower choices. We're really passionate at our office. We tell people we're not in charge of your health. You are, we just come alongside people and empower people with information and then help them create the program or the plan that's gonna work for them. So it's actually kind of fun. I wish there were more of us. Um, simple nutrition, I just put this in because um, our photographer for our website took a really cool picture and I just wanted to put that in there. So we're moving on. All right, guys, so here is toxin management, okay? My dad was an electrician. And so he, this, his, the saying came from him because he often talked about when he taught people electricity, he always said there's the goes, he said, it's easy. Anybody can do electricity. It's the goes into and the goes out of. And I said, dad, I'm going to use that. So toxin management, that's what it is. It's the goes into and the goes out of, right? And so what we're doing is we need to limit what goes into the body. And the, you guys are all, I mean, you guys are like, masters at all of this, right? This is why you've gotten into essential oils. Like you've changed your beauty products, you change your cleaning products, you're working on some of those other things um, like cookware and water filters and air filters and food. Those are the major pieces of the goes into piece. And so that's a whole nother lecture of how do you limit those things? And you guys, like I said, are well on your way with that. Um, but the other piece to this, and this is the important part because I often get, I do essential oils and I eat clean and so I'm good. And the fact of the matter is, the reality is, is that's not exactly true. It is a huge piece, but it is not, not the whole picture. And you can be doing all those things and your liver can still be congested and your lymphatics can still be congested without having, if you don't have a toxin management plan, right? So hopefully that makes sense, right? So the Gozalda, is maximizing your body's ability to get rid of those toxins, right? So how do you do that? Um, let's quickly talk about the detoxification organs, right? You have your kidneys and your lungs, which no one really thinks about, right? Your liver and your gallbladder, your intestines, your lymphatics, and then your cells, right? Your cells are detoxing all the time. Um, there's a little part in every cell called the mitochondria and it has a Krebs cycle and I learned it long time ago in med school. And I still try and study it and memorize it, but that's a detoxification pathway. And so if we're not maximizing our body's ability to get all those organs to function efficiently, then we're going to have a stop gap. We're, we're limiting the goes into, but if we don't get the goes out of going out, then we're in trouble. All right. So here's our detox organs, right? All of these that we talked about. Let's quickly go over them, right? Your kidneys obviously filter 
what? They filter water, right? And so your lungs work on the pH of the body. They're obviously, the lungs, the obvious thing is we breathe out CO2, right? That's a toxic gas, right? When we talk about, um, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Like uh, when the environment, and we talk about the CO2 getting trapped in the atmosphere and, you know, the, the environment heating up and all of that, CO2 is toxin, right? And so our lungs are exchanging, bringing in oxygen and getting rid of CO2. The lungs are also really, really important in, in managing our pH. And we don't think about that, but when we have acidities in our body, our lungs are a big part of what actually gets rid of and, and changes that acid pH. Our skin, our skin is our absolute biggest organ in our body, right? And we, what do we do in the medical world? We just ignore it or we send it all to the dermatologist. And I love dermatology boggles my mind that it's the hardest residency to get into and your options in treatment are steroid one or steroid two. Like that's all they, the tools that they have. And I'm going to tell you that if you have something on your skin, your detox organs are not working maximally, right? It's a huge hint that your detox organs are clogged. This is your gallbladder down here. I know it looks like an eggplant for those of us who garden, but it's really your gallbladder. Um, that's stuck right up under your liver. And we're gonna talk about how the gallbladder is actually a very interesting detoxification organ. And actually some would say part of the lymphatic system. So we'll talk about that really cool thing. Um, obviously the liver, the liver is a huge detox organ. And then of course we have our bowels and we have um, lymphatics and cells. This is all of our lymphatics. I made that picture bigger. All right, so we're gonna talk about taking out the trash, but I want you to know why I think I'm qualified to talk about this subject, okay? As you guys heard in the intro, I am an osteopathic physician. That means that every single person that walks into my office, I'm putting my hands on them. And so the absolute amazing part of osteopathy is that we are trained not only how the spine is moving and the muscles are moving and the ligaments and the bones, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. We also are trained in how the liver moves. Is that liver moving? Because here's the amazing part. I, so I'm going to give this to you from a, a Christian worldview because I'm a Christian. Um, and uh, actually the founder of osteopathic medicine has its roots in the Bible. He actually talks about in the beginning of his autobiography that when God breathed life into man, we often just think, oh, we started breathing. But that's not the whole, the whole case. God breathed life into man and everything started moving, not just our, our, able to, our ability to breathe, but our heart beating and our liver moving. And so we're trained that we can feel, is the liver moving appropriately? Is the gallbladder moving appropriately? Is the bowel moving appropriately? Is the brain moving appropriately? And so because I've been able to put my hands on people for the last 13 years and the you know, nine years of training before that is I can assess someone's organs and say, they're not moving. And so we actually do detox or organ assessments in our office all the time. It's part of everything that we do or every day what we do, right? So that's how I think that I, I, I am qualified to tell you about this because I've been doing it so long, okay? So here we go. Here's the taking out the trash, guys, okay? And a lot of this is in the ebook that I'm going to give you guys a free thingamajiggy for at the end, okay? But your liver, I need you to think about your liver as your big trash can, okay? So your big trash can outside your house in your driveway, it needs to be taken to the curb every day, really two to four times a day. The bowels are the number one priority, okay? So if that big trash can is full and you try and put more stuff in it without taking it to the curb, what's gonna happen? It's gonna overflow and it's gonna get really stinky and really gross. And most likely in real life, that's going to equate to someone with joint pain, fatigue, rashes, headaches. And so this bowels are a number one priority. And most Americans are not moving two to four times a day, right? I could ask you guys all this, raise your hand. Who's, who, who's moving their bowels two to four times a day? I have Hashimoto's, it is a daily struggle, right? All right, so here's the thing though, there is an order to this detoxification. So we have our bowels, we need to get the bowels moving. 
then comes the liver and the gallbladder because it is that big trash can outside your house. And sometimes then the lymphatics and then the cells. And if we don't follow that order is when you may have some reactions, okay? I'm sure you guys have heard of a Herxheimer reaction. Some of us shorten it to Herx. It's really just, I mean, in medicine, what we do, just in case you were wondering, is we, we name stuff after the man who developed it or discovered it. Very rarely a woman, but so her, Dr. Herxheimer discovered the Herxheimer reaction. And so what is this? It's a reaction when your liver can't keep up with what your body is trying to detox, right? And so it can happen with all forms of detoxification. And so if that, but that liver is that kind of linchpin there. And so look at all these symptoms because it sounds like 80% of America, right? Headaches, muscle fatigue, muscle aches, joint pain, sleep disturbances, frequent urination, loose stools, GI upset, irritability, anxiousness or palpitations, right? And so just as, a, as you're doing this lymph challenge, if you have some of these reactions, I'm going to give you a kind of um, a cheat sheet on what to do but you need to slow down what you're doing because it probably means your liver is clogged and you probably spend four to six weeks working on your liver and then come back to the lymph, okay? All right, so let's go back to that. Priority number one are your bowels. In my ebook, guys, there is like under each priority or under each step, there's a, a table that gives you cheap, easy things to do at home to get all these pieces moving. So for the bowels, you'll see it in the, the book, but number we our favorite, honestly, besides increasing your water, right? Increasing your water um, is vitamin C and magnesium are our two favorite at the office. And the reason is, is because you're gonna get another benefit, right? I, we like to use things. Yeah. My motto is I don't buy anything. Yeah. I don't use anything that doesn't have at least two uses on my homestead, in my office, it has to have at least two uses for me to, to utilize it, okay? And so um, vitamin C and magnesium have many uses and we're using it to get our bowels moving actually for the side effect because what it does is it pulls water into the bowels and then you it allows you to have looser stools. So I often tell people if it's winter time or you're worried about your immune system um, and you don't have kidney stones, or haven't had kidney stones, vitamin C is gonna be the one you wanna to go to, right? If you happen to have high blood pressure or you're having trouble sleeping or you have muscle aches, then magnesium is gonna be a better one. Or if you have some anxiety, magnesium can help with that too. Magnesium might be a better one for you. And so these are things that obviously Young Living has, but health food stores have them. The only challenge with Young Living products, or at least I know the vitamin C is it doesn't tell you how much vitamin C is actually in it, right? So. You can't really overdose in vitamin C, okay? We give people in IV form like 80 gram, 80, like lots and lots of up to 100 grams of vitamin C, which is a really lot. Um, the only time you can't do vitamin C really is if you have kidney stones, because there is some research that shows that it can increase the propensity for kidney stones. We've only had it happen once and it was um, in someone who was getting like high, high dose vitamin C. All that to say, you just have to keep taking Young Living's until you poop. And then once you poop, you back it off by one, right? And so we often tell people, take it at night, start with three or four. And if you poop the next day, great. If it's really watery and loose, well then go down by one and take three the next day. If you take three and you don't poop, then take four or five or six the next day and see if you poop and kind of just work it like that until you have your bowels at a consistency that you're going twice a day. That makes sense, everybody? Okay. All right, so once your bowels are moving, then we can move on to the big trash can. Once you get your the liver moving, okay? And again, I because we're trying to concentrate on lymphatics, all of this is in the ebook on how you get your liver moving. Um, but you really wanna work on, I tell people, and I, and I know this again from putting my hands on people, it usually takes four to six weeks of putting into place two or three of those things on their chart for the liver. And the number one one is, I will tell you, is castor oil packs. And I know we're coming into a season where it stinks to do castor oil packs, but I'm not, I have given people all kinds of supplements, guys. I've used, and I've used the Young Living ones. I've used, I've used them all. 
and casserole packs still work the best and they're the cheapest, right? So invest in um, casserole packs, invest in a little wrap. I know Sarah's done a video on them. We sell that we have a patient that makes them in the office. You can buy them online for 50 or 60 bucks, um, but it makes doing casserole packs incredibly easy. And so part of my overall toxin management plan, like preventatively, is that I do casserole packs twice a week and I put them on and I have a video that I have all the instructions in the ebook and there's videos, all that stuff that you can have access to. Um, but I, I wear it over, I wear it to sleep twice a, twice a week, okay? And I'll tell you at the end what my full toxin management plan, but that's the most important thing that you could do for yourself is invest in casserole packs and learn to love them. Um, all right, so now we're moving on to the inside. You've got your bowels moving, you got your liver moving. Now we can move inside to the house, okay? The lymphatics are the kids whose chore it is to take the small inside trash cans and dump them into the big trash can, okay? So let me unpack that a little bit for you. This is a graphic that I marked up because I love this idea. All of these little guys, the little circles, little spindle-like shaped things are cells right? Cells live in fluid. There's a big name for it called interstitial fluid, but they live in there, right? And so the way cells get nutrients is this side on the right-hand side of your slide, you'll see a capillary. That's the smallest unit of a blood vessel, right? And so we digest our food, it absorbs into our blood system, and then it gets to each cellular level, like this little graph shows, like all that little funky stuff in there. That's let's just say some leg cells, some muscle cells, those nutrients are going to ooze across and out of the capillary by fluid, which is why you gotta drink water, lots of it, right? You guys know how much water you're supposed to drink? Your body weight divided by two in ounces a day. However, you're doing a lymph challenge, so you need to add at least 16, okay? So that's how much water you need to be drinking a day. Okay, so back to these nutrients, they flow across out of the capillaries into this interstitial fluid and they wash across the cells. And as they wash across the cells, the cells are getting bathed in the nutrients they need to do their work. And so those nutrients get absorbed into the cell and then the cell does all of its work that it's supposed to do. And then the byproducts or the trash flows out of the cell into that fluid and then into my favorite word, lymphangion, okay? This is the smallest unit of the lymph system, okay? And then it has to flow all the way back up to the heart, okay? So this is how this, this lymphatic flow goes everywhere in your body. So all the little small trash cans that you have in your house are actually lymphangions in this little analogy, okay? And so what happens is, Oh, I just said this, the cells are bathed, they do their work and they get rid of their trash and they deposit it into the lymphangion, AKA the lymph system, okay? Right, going back to this, remember the nutrients come out of the capillary into that interstitial fluid extracellular matrix, which is, it's all connected. That's how an osteopathic physician, I can put your hand on your abdomen and feel your liver or my hands on your skull and feel your pituitary gland, right? Because it's all connected through this extracellular matrix. And then it flows into the trash, flows into the lymphangion. Think about it this way. It's almost like the tide coming through, right? Like as you see the tide wash up onto the shore, it brings stuff in and then it brings stuff out when it goes back out, okay? All right, so here is the lymphatic system. It is a super highway of vessels and nodes that connects that interstitial fluid to the kidneys and the liver, okay? It includes lymph nodes, lymph vessels, spleen, tonsils, yes, the things that they take out all the time, and Peyer's patches. Now, Peyer's patches is just a really fancy word. Again, probably, I guess it was Dr. Pyers, I don't know, or Dr. Patches, I don't know. Anyway, there's these little actually lymph nodes in your gut. And so your gut has its own little lymphatic lymph nodes in there doing the same work, okay? So now the cells have dumped their trash into the small trash can. That kid 
whose job it is to take that trash and dump it into the big trash can is your lymphatic system, right? So that's what it's doing. It's taking the trash and dumping it where it needs to go, okay? Oh. So those green vessels, look at that's kind of a representation. And if you guys ever get, I mean, if you're ever really interested and Body Worlds exhibit comes back around, it was in the Franklin Institute a while ago, they actually put something on these human bodies that dissolve everything except the lymphatic system. And it was, looked like it looked more intricate th than this. Like you could still see the outline of the human body. And so the lymphatic vessels are everywhere, right? So the green in the picture are your lymphatics. They go to every single cell in the body right? And it serves the lymph nodes specifically. And I have a picture here. Um, the lymph nodes serve as a, you know how like, so in the, the lymph challenge, they've been showing you kind of areas to massage where your lymph nodes are. If you guys have ever had like an upper rest, a, a head cold or a sinus infection, you get lymph nodes, right? And you can feel them. That's what this little doohickey is. It's a lymph node, right? And so what it does, they're located throughout the body. And they're full of B cells and T cells, which are, remember our antibodies and our natural killer cells, if you've ever heard of them. And so they're, they have a reservoir of those in these lymph nodes. And so when you get an infection or foreign invaders, our body is really, really smart. It gets into that fluid space right between the cells and the lymph system gets into the lymph system and the lymph system recognizes it by our antibodies. And it then takes it to the lymph node where we can then neutralize it or kill it. And so that's what the lymph node or how the lymph system is really a big part of the immune system, okay? Now here's a probably, uh, if, if you've zoned out with some of that, I apologize, this is gonna be important. How the lymphatics drain are actually important to us in us doing a lymph challenge or anyone who wants to get their lymph draining. See this picture? It's really, really interesting. And I don't know, I might ask God when I get to heaven, why is this? But the lymph system is set up in a way that the right side of the head, the right neck and the right arm drain to right under the right collarbone. The entire rest of the system, both legs, the left arm, all drain over to the left side. Isn't that kind of weird? I find it kind of funny, but I, I see it clinically when people, you know, they'll, have lymph nodes on one side of their necks, particularly because one of their, the drainage spots for their lymph is really, really clogged. So one or the other, okay? So the right side drains right under that, that collarbone. So here's my collarbone here on the right side, right under the collarbone, kind of here's my breastbone, right? Or my sternum, right in that little gap, right there is where the lymph drains to on that right side, okay? And that's going to be important because we're going to show you something in a minute. And then the entire rest of the body floats over to the other side. So I'm just going to show you the, oh, there's my pictures. Okay. So the right side, again, is right there under that collarbone. And here's the left side. And I think they, Tiffany, is it Tiffany in the Young Living Group that showed a video and she called them the neurolymphatic spots. And so if you come down, if you come down your, your sternum here, your breastbone, you're going to feel a little bump. If you hook a left right there at that bump, it's gonna put you right on top of rib two. If you go kind of come right above it in the soft spot, it's gonna be tender. And right below it in the soft spot, it's probably tender. That is where the lymphatic drain is on the left side, okay? So when they tell you in the limb challenge, skin brush and rebound, those are all really important. But if the drain isn't open, it's not going anywhere. So before you skin brush or before you rebound, get into this little spot and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can tap or you can, I teach my patients, just get in there and do little circles. Eucalyptus oil, lavender oil, thieves oil, all of those oils are, I, I have found that all of them work. So it's the, the number one rule of oils, right? Use what you got. Um, so I tell my patients, to massage this side and to massage here for 30 to 40 seconds a day. That's it, it's all it takes, right? So during this limb challenge, we're skin brushing every day. So make this a part of it before you skin brush, okay? The other really cheap, and, and I would, it's in my bag that I didn't get a chance to bring upstairs yet, but I have a little cheap 
five below three prong um, massager um, that is battery operated. And I, you can get two prongs here and one prong on the other side. And I do that, I, it's on my nightstand. And so right before I go to bed, I just put that on for uh, two minutes every night before bed, right? Why before bed? because your big trash can, that liver, does most of its work overnight, right? And so if you're trying to dump your lymphatics into the big trash can, it's a really good idea to get the drains open for the lymphatic system so it can get to your liver, right? Now, if you're just starting a, a cleanse and you may not have worked on your liver, you may wanna do a castor oil pack before you go to bed to help offload some of that liver congestion, okay? All right, so we just talked about the thoracic. Those are actually called, these areas here that I mentioned, they're actually called thoracic ducts, not quack quack duct, but duct, D-U-C-T duct, okay? Just kind of fun, okay. All right, so what are the functions of lymphatics? Is everyone still cool? Are we still good? I'm not like, running you out of here, you're still understanding with me? Okay. What are the functions of the lymphatics? So we talked about transporting foreign invaders. That's really important, right? When we get sick, it helps our immune system, but it also transports proteins and other waste products back into blood circulation. Here's the other really important part and my silly logo is over top of it. So I apologize for that. It plays a huge role in dietary fat transport or lipids from our gut, right? And so as we, sometimes we find, or I work with patients who are a little bit overweight, right? And sometimes it's an estrogen dominant issue. And sometimes it's just a huge toxin burden issue. Your body it's so incredibly smart. Most toxins are fat soluble, right? So they, if you were to dump them in, um, you know, the water vinegar thing, if you were to dump these toxins into like um, a glass of water, they wouldn't mix. It would be like putting oil and water together, right? The only organ that we have in our body that deals with fat soluble um, toxins are our liver. So your body is so incredibly smart that is, it, it, if it is overloaded, with toxins, whether they're estrogenetic toxins, whether they're pesticide toxins, whether they're food toxins, most of them are fat soluble. And so they need to be transported via the lymph system to the liver. And if they can't, your body is going to produce more adipose tissue, which is fat cells to store it. Because it can't store in water, it can't go to the kidney and get peed out because it's not water soluble, the body wants to protect your vital organs from these toxins. And so the way that it does it is it creates fat cells around it and then just stores it and stores it and stores it, right? And so a huge piece of weight loss is toxin management and getting these lymphatics working efficiently so that you can get rid of the adipose tissue and start losing weight, right? And sometimes, and this really isn't in the literature, but I believe, Let's go back real quick. Are you guys, I might get passionate about a few things, I'm sorry. This lymphangion thing, you see this thing? It is one cell thick, the same as capillaries. And so the same as your gut barrier and the same as your brain barrier, right? So we talk about leaky gut is pretty well um, versatile and I think talked about a ton these days. The medical field is still kind of eh, whether they actually believe it. But there's also a such thing as leaky brain. And I believe that there's also a thing as link, leaky lymph. And if you have leaky lymph, you're more predisposed to have metabolic syndrome, right? Which is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, obesity. And that increases your risks for a ton of chronic illness. And so getting that lymphatic system moving is so incredibly, incredibly important. All right, let me go back to where I was. Okay, and the other thing is that this is really, really new um, in the literature. It actually has a huge role in insulin sensitivity and diabetes. And so the research is, is so new that they don't know chicken or egg, what causes what, um, but 
people that have diabetes and um, insulin resistance have lymph that does not flow and lymphatic vessels that do not work as well as they should. Um, so even more important to keep our lymphatics moving so that we prevent metabolic syndrome and so that we prevent chronic illness called diabetes. Okay. All right, so here's, again, this is gonna, you're gonna have all this in the free ebook. So just sit back and kind of think about this for a second. What kinds of things decrease lymphatic flow? Stress. There have been studies that actually show that we're, when we're in that fight or flight or sympathetic dominant state, our lymph flow becomes like cottage cheese. Thick, gelatinous, not flowing at all. Your lymph fluid should be flowing like a creek, thin, clearish like liquid, and just kind of rubbling on through. And if we're constantly in that fight or flight, our lymph is not flowing. And so we can skin and brush all we want, but if we're running all over the place, it's a rest or digest organ. It fits into that parasympathetic space, so to, so to speak. So anything you do to breathe deeply, ground yourself, do something that you love, that brings you joy, all those things are actually gonna increase your lymphatic flow right? Dehydration, that's a no-brainer, right? Our bodies are 60 to 80% water. I showed you all those cells live in water. And so you need water to flush the system. Lack of movement, right? Here's a really cool thing. And I don't know if I have this in my PowerPoint presentation, but lymphatics, it was always thought that lymphatics require us to move them. The body is much smarter than that. And God's such a more amazing creator than that. Um, yes, it requires us to move, right? Our muscles help to propel lymph up back up to the heart, right? We talked about they have to come all the way. That lymphatic vessel in your calf has to come all the way up to here on the left side, right? So it's got to go against gravity through all that stuff up here. And so they have one-way valves that will open and lymph will come through and then they close. So they can't go back down, right? But our moving, that's why we... That's why we're rebound, right? Rebounding is great for the lymphatic system. Breathing, excuse me. And in one of the resources that I'm gonna give you, there's a couple of videos of how to breathe specific for your um, lymphatics, which is an amazing, this physical therapy therapist put it together and she's amazing. Tight clothing, right? Women, we wear underwire that impedes lymphatic flow drastically. Um, tight, other tight clothing will impede lymphatic Flow. Obviously, surgeries, they just cut right through lymphatic vessels. They don't care about them. Um, and so there'll be scar tissue around them. And so if you've had surgery here, let's say, and there's scar tissue, well, the lymph from here to here isn't going to get past that scar tissue without maybe some manual um, lymphatic techniques by um, someone who's certified to do that or osteopathic medicine or some other techniques to get rid of scar tissue. Toxins, obviously, we talked about that, so it goes into, right, just clogging up the system. Emotions. Emotions are a toxin, guys, or can be, I shouldn't say they all are, but they can be a toxin, right? Negative emotions of not letting go will keep the lymphatic system from moving. And so one of the best things that you can do for your lymphatic system is take to your quiet time or your reflective time, meditation time, what is it that I need to let go of? right? What resentment, what anger, what, what do I need to let go of? Um, obviously infections. And then the one people don't really think about, and we kind of specialize in from an osteopathic standpoint is if you've had a trauma, physical trauma to this area, right? And let's think about this. This is a very common thing. We as women, we as Americans, we work like this, right? Whether we're in the garden or doing dishes or at the computer or whatever, we're like this. And so our bodies come down like this and all of this gets clogged up, right? So our posture has a big thing to do with that lymph flow, right? And so any injury to the upper back, chest, neck, head, all of that will impede some of this lymphatic flow into these areas, okay? 
All right, so what are some things that actually get it moving? We talked about what gets it slowed down. What gets it moving? Well, number one, we talked about the thoracic duct massage, right? 30 to 40 seconds, once a day. That will get that moving for you. Skin brushing, if you're part of the challenge, you know that skin brushing is a huge way to move lymphatics. And it takes, what, a $10 brush? We sell them in the office a whole, we have ones that cost, I think, six bucks and ones that have like, the fancier long handles and a, a face brush with it for 20. Um, so they're relatively cheap. Rebounding, right? Now rebounding, rebounders used to be pretty expensive, like over a hundred bucks, but now they're cheap and you can get them at Walmart for like 30 bucks. They're not fabulous, but who cares, right? But here's the other really cool thing. You actually don't even need a rebounder. You can actually just bounce on your toes and that's free, guys. That's absolutely free, okay? All right, so bouncing. If you don't have a rebounder, we just tell people to, to bounce for one to two minutes a day. All right, so, so far we talked about doing thoracic duct massage for 30 to 40 seconds, and now I'm telling you to bounce for two minutes. Okay, so we're up to two minutes and 40 seconds a day, okay? Pedal pump is a technique that we use as osteopathic physicians, but for patients that can't bounce or can't rebound, we actually will have a significant other just bounce their bottom. If they're laying on their back, you can just bounce the bottom of their feet. Okay. Walking, going for short walks, doesn't have to be long walks, doesn't have to be quick. So we tell people walk for two to five minutes, a couple times a day. That will do it. I have a vert detox kit on here. Um, it's a wonderful homeopathic detox kit that we use all the time that comes from Germany. I should have taken it out because it's been out of stock forever, but it works really, really well. Okay. Are we good? Everyone feels okay? That, like, I want to be able to answer questions. Um, so the gallbladder, the gallbladder is like one of my favorite friends and the medical community has us convinced that we don't need it. And I don't believe that. Not that you can't live without it, right? Because our bodies are amazing and fearfully and wonderfully made. However, it's actually really important, right? So what does the gallbladder do? The liver produces bile salts and our gallbladder stores them. The gallbladder will secrete them in response to stuff that's in our stomach, food and different hormones um, and enzymes. I'll, I'll reserve all the, the fun names of them. Um, but they stimulate the gallbladder to kind of squeeze out the bile salts and they land in our small intestine. And they help us digest fats and transport fats. Oh, we just learned the lymphatic system helps us digest our fats and transport our fats, right? So there's kind of the same. And it actually, the bile salts actually bind to toxins. And so they will bind to toxins in our intestine, bring them to the large intestine and then excrete them, right? That's the taking out the trash, taking to the curb piece. And then the bile salts actually then get recycled, okay? That makes sense. So then it gets recycled back to the gallbladder and stored. But here's where it's super important because if you're constipated and not pooping, Guess what else you're recycling back to the liver? All those toxins that your body's trying to get rid of. So helping your gallbladder function well is part of the lymphatic system for the gut, but also incredibly important for a toxin management plan, okay? Plus parasites like to hide there too. So um, just to give you kind of, um, well, I'll put this up. These are resources. And this, uh, I'm going to post this in the, the event on Facebook. That way you can have, you guys can get them. Okay. Um, but before I get to that, I just want to say like, or go over, well, I'll just tell you what I've been doing. My toxin management plan. Okay. And I've been doing toxin management stuff for probably 10 years or so. I drink three to four quarts of three and a half quarts of water a day. So that means as soon as I get up in the morning, I'm downing 16 ounces of water. Sometimes I, have, I, I add apple cider vinegar and a drop of lemon essential oil, okay? So I leave a little bottle of apple cider vinegar in my bathroom and my lemon essential oil in my bathroom. So it's as soon as I get up, I'm taking that, okay? Then throughout the day, I'm making sure I get enough water. And so when I get to work, I fill up two of these bad boys and I make sure by the time I leave, they're done. So now I've got two and a half quarts down. 
And then on my travel, see, this takes, this takes thought guys. It's not hard, but it just takes intention, intentionality, right? Club Mason jar right there. Right. Um, and then I have a travel, um, 32 ounce, um, my travel water bottle, um, that is in my car that I take to work with me. So then I drink that on the way to work and the way home. So that's my third quart. And then if I get another eight ounces, by the time I get home, that's like doing well. I don't get it done every day, but that's my goal. Okay. That's number one. That's my water goal. And this would be my, my, my goal for you would be to come up with a toxin management plan. Okay. What am I doing for my kidneys? How am I going to get that much water in? Do I need to add essential oils? Do I need to add electrolytes? Do I need to add something else to get that water down? Right. Um, and limiting your caffeine because that's just going to get rid of the, the fluid. Right. So that's my kidney plan. My liver, my bowel plan is that I need to take no pun intended, a crap ton of vitamin C and magnesium to keep my bowels going just the way it is with my Hashimoto's. Okay. My liver plan is that I do casserole packs twice a week. I just wear them overnight. I don't add extra heat because who's got time for that? I throw it on, put my wrap on and go to bed. Okay. Twice a week, I do coffee enemas. Okay. The night, the morning after I do my casserole pack, I do coffee enemas. So that's my liver plan. I usually add uh, Juvaflex to my um, casserole packs if it's where it's supposed to be and my kids haven't stolen it, which is right at my bedside, okay? That's my liver plan. Um, my lymphatic plan is that I rebound two minutes a day. I told you I do the little um, handheld massager thing two minutes every night before I go to bed. I rebound every morning and then I typically skin brush two to three times a week. I don't do every day. Okay. That's my usual toxin management plan. And then I have a red light at home that I use quite frankly, frequently as well. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And when I do that, I feel really, really well. Now, at also part of my toxin management plan, I did a parasite cleanse. Just, we usually do spring and fall. We did one in the, what month are we in? May? We're in May right? So we did one in March. And then right before the second one came around, I did a gallbladder liver flush, which is by far the nastiest thing I've ever done. And I've done a lot of things um, to clear out that gallbladder. Then I did another parasite cleanse right on the back of that. Like I did my gallbladder liver flush a day or two prior to doing my um, second parasite cleanse. And I've got to tell you guys with that plan, my energy is amazing. I don't need to take a whole lot of supplements except my basic things that everyone's deficient in. And so, and these things, again, most of them are free. The parasite cleanse wasn't, right? You buy supplements for that. But for the most part, most of those things are pretty darn cheap to do. And you guys are, if you're part of Young Living, you're getting a lot of those oils at a, at a discount, right? Okay, so real quickly, I'm going, I want to give you guys my free ebook. It was kind of fun to do the graphics and stuff. If you guys find typos, let me know because I'm certainly not perfect. And then the other thing that I want to offer to you guys is I have a lot of courses. So here's my deal because I know someone's going to ask, can I become your patient? And the, the answer is maybe. <laughs> okay. I have um, a pretty big waiting list. And so this is my way of helping more people. We do take new patients and we've created a whole program for them to come in. Um, and we would love for that for you guys to happen. We're finishing our next last group now. The next group isn't until September. Um, and we're bringing people on and getting them well really, really quickly. So hopefully they don't need a whole lot from us and, and our power to do most of these things at home. But guess what I'm teaching them? A lot of these things, right? And so the things that I'm offering you guys and putting together for you is really because I want you guys to be able to do these things at home and you don't need me for those things, right? And so all that to say, I've put together um, a toxin management bundle um, and there's the, the code to get the 75 bucks off is get, get the lymph flowing, all caps, right? And so I'll post that in the group too. That way you can check it out if it's something that you will find helpful. It's basically the academics and the, the lectures behind what toxin management is a little bit of what we talked about, but a little bit more in depth, um, and then helping you through all the tutorials and videos of all the kinds of things that we, we talked about um, today, if you feel like that would be helpful for you, okay? The other things that I want to tell you about are, oh, hold on, we'll go here, resources that are not my own, 
Okay. If you guys are into this lymph thing, the lymphatic rescue summit is a summit put on by 40 or so experts in the field of lymphatics and it is free. And so it's a week long where you have access to multiple lectures a day. So you can pick the one that's going to, you know, be more, most applicable to you. And so I just put the link to register for that guys, because I've, I've done this for a few years and there's so much more information about lymphatics in there. So that's there. Um, above that, and I'll put these all in the group as well, so you can have them. Um, that is the, the physical therapist that has, she has two or three videos on there of how to get your lymphatics moving. And they're videos and um, techniques that I've never seen anybody else do. And they're incredibly effective. Okay. So that's that. And then I just want to go back real quick and tell you just what, what else we, I, I have to offer. Um, that you don't have to sit and wait for six months for. Obviously we talked about the toxin management bundle or you could just, I think there's a course in there that's just lymphatics. You could buy that one too. I don't, um, I need someone to help me organize them but they're all there. Um, we have a detox room. And so if you're, I'm, I'm not quite Southern Lancaster County I'm kind of in the middle of Lancaster County. So I think I'm about 35 minutes away from Sarah. So if you're in the Southern or middle end we have a detox room um, that I'll show you the flyer. We honestly, we've tried to make it as cheap as possible. What we've got a massage share, maybe it should be here. A massage share, a foot bath, red light, um, biomats in there, and all kinds of education on just helping you detox. It's not magic, but it just helps in the process. We do nutritional IVs, um, which can range just from simple um, vitamins and minerals while you're replacing and while you're detoxing, up to we do um, sort of precise. Uh, personal nutrient evaluations and doing IV specific to a person. We do that as well. Okay. Um, there's also a supplement plan that I put together, blah, blah, blah. It's all there. Um, so all that to say, that is my presentation. So I know I'm kind of close, um, but I will stick around if, if you guys have questions for me. So if you have, that was yeah. amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's take some questions. Can you see the um, questions on your oh, end? Let me pull up the chat. Okay. Um, so I'll just kind of go through the the brush one. I, the question about brushes, great question. Mine, I don't remember. The ones that we have in the office are made, I don't know what they're made of. I don't think they're plastic. They're like um, bamboo or something. Um, but yes, you're not the, the, you're rubbing the plastic on your skin is actually okay for the purpose for which we we're using it. You're not sucking on the plastic. You're not eating the plastic. Um, if you want, if you, you're doing this more long-term and you want to invest in a better one, then you can invest, invest in one that has organic, um, fibers on it. But I don't know what mine's made of actually. All right. Gallstones. Great question. Um, or if you've had your gallbladder removed. If you've had your gallbladder removed, you probably should take bile salts or mm -hmm. ox bile um, and making sure you're really taking care of your liver because then your liver is gonna have to produce and squirt all of the bile salts that you need, okay? Um, I think Young Living has a magnesium supplement, don't they, Sarah? Yes. Um, well, it's the Kids Sense Unwind, um, which my children love, um, but it has 5-HTP in it too. So it helps um, that precursor to serotonin and melatonin, right? Which helps, you know, support. Yeah, but it has like a tiny, it only has like, I just checked it out. Wait, I have it downstairs. I think it only has like four milligrams of magnesium. Yeah. In it, so that's not going to help you poop unless no. you're taking the whole box. No, it, that one helps you rewind unwind. Um, I do the calm. I don't know what you recommend, but, um, I remember that, uh, I went, I did the full dose the first time I got that. And then I went out and about, and I was like, Oh, I need to go back home. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> so yeah, natural calm has one and they're, they're pretty decent. That's what we use that it's easier to titrate up because it's a powder. Mm -hmm. We actually have, there's a company that we use called perk. Who's this really, really, really cute, amazing, smart, Jewish gentleman that researches all the amounts and different magnesiums and puts them in the right constituents um, that we recommend at the office. But if you need a health food store version, Natural Calm is, is the best one. 
Um, let's see, para, doing a parasite cleanse while pregnant or nursing. I would not recommend it unless you, I have had a patient come in that had an active like florid parasite infection, then yes, but otherwise I would wait. Nursing, while you're nursing, you can do a one with olive leaf extract, which is a very mild parasite cleanse, um, but I wouldn't use anything more than that when you're nursing. So I usually tell my patient population, um, wait till you're done nursing and then give yourself a good, you know, six to eight months before you're, or at least, at least if I can convince them to give me four months before they get pregnant again, you can get most of this stuff done and then. Um, it is recorded. Um, what do I suggest for, for gluten-free folks instead of the multigreens for the challenge? Yes. Um, so those are the two pieces that I'm actually not using because I am gluten-free. I'm not using the multigreens. There's lots of people that don't have reactions to it. Um, and Young, Live, Young Living does say that it is gluten-free. However, um, there are still people that are going to react. So just buy a gluten-free greens at the health food store. Um, Perfect Food is one. I know that um, Garden of Life has one. Um, I'm a homesteading hippie with a dehydrator. So I use all my own dehydrated greens um, and I save them. So, um, but yeah, you can find plenty of gluten-free um, multi-greens. You just wanna make sure when you turn it around, if it does say like wheatgrass, technically, if it's harvested before day 11, it's still gluten-free. And so sometimes you have to call the company because wheatgrass is actually really good. Um, but if you really need to be gluten-free, then you need to make sure that it's been harvested at the right time. That makes sense. Um, let's see where we're at. Um, I just said, uh, so bile salts, not bio salts. Um, bum, 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 cruising through. Bile salts you can get at a health food store. Um, we have an online store. If anyone's interested, you can just send me and I can send you the link um, to the ones that we use. But I think if you just go to the health food store and ask for bile salts, they should know what they're talking about. Um, and can you do this challenge if you have a seven inch cyst on your liver? The answer is you can, but I would probably take care of your liver first by doing mm -hmm. casserole packs for four to six weeks, three to four times a week, at least 30 to 40 minutes. And then I don't know when you're due for a rescan of that, but it's always fun to see when they go away after just doing casserole packs. So I would do that for a good six weeks and then consider doing the lymph challenge then. All right, I think I cruised through those all pretty quickly. You did, thank you so much. And if you guys have any more questions, you can uh, message Dr. Boyer, uh, directly, um, she gave you all her info. Thank you so much. I mean, everything you shared tonight was spot on and I'm glad you do casserole packs without heat too because I always get questions. You can do them without heat. I'm like, I wear them at nighttime. I'll strap them to my body and just go about my day. I don't have time to lay for an hour or two <laughs> doing nothing. I'm a mama, a better homeschooler. You know, it's just, no, just put it on. <laughs> put it on and go. <laughs> Yes, they are incredible. And um, yeah, your information was incredible. And if you um, are, yeah, you asked where to source a lot of those things. If you need any oils or any of the things for the challenge, the group is closed right now. The um, Tiffany, the RN, she had closed it. But if you're curious, if you're not in that group, um, one of us can help you with that or um, refer to the person that invited you tonight and we can help you source some of those oils and supplements um, within Young Living. And then uh, Dr. Boyer and I can help you source some of the supplements that um, she had talked about tonight. So thank you so much. That was so like filled with information. And next week, um, these are our Monday night calls and so many of you are, are um, new here tonight. These are Monday night calls where we talk about wellness, we talk about oils, um, and just how to keep your body running strong. And I love that you're doing toxin management, Dr. Boyer, be, Dr. Boyer because um, even though we can eat the right foods, um, exercise, do all the right things, the air we breathe, the water we drink sometimes isn't just always the best, right? And we just always have to be mindful of keeping our body running strong and making sure that our body is eliminating properly. So um, I hope you can join us on more Monday night calls. Um, 
Next week is all about brand partnership and what to do if you're feeling stuck um, in your business or just feeling stuck in general. So the last Monday night of every month is always for brand partners in Young Living. So that's next week. Thank you all for joining. Have a beautiful week. Good night. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.